The one day, the house that you've worked so hard to build and make nice will be owned by some complete stranger. The fancy things that you you required will be crumpled with rust. So even the people that you love and raise at the moment, their children's children won't even think about you. So today we have Bilal Shahid in the house. In terms of what most people know me for is for my music composition. So we weren't going to touch on the whole music is haram thing, but in terms of, for me, I'm at a crossroad in my life. I've now realised I've probably got traits of ADHD, which is like my brain's constantly just, it's, it's hard to put the, the brakes on. Abba was always at work in the restaurant five, seven days a week. So the fact that he even picked that up uh, shows how much attention he paid to us when he was at home for the short periods of time that he was. Bilal Shahid Bai. Yes. It's been a very, very long time since we last spoke. I think it's about a year now. Um, we're definitely long overdue a catch up. And I thought, well, you know, what could be a better way than having a conversation live on air? So thank you for accommodating Side by Side podcast in your extremely busy schedule because I know yesterday you told me oh you know something's really urgent come up and I kind of like didn't want to listen to it and I said look just come just come you know we'll we'll, we'll make it nice and quick so thank you for thank you for coming in you're welcome by now it's my pleasure I had some bits but I had to make time for you thank you so much thank you thank you now for the purpose of I guess at least my uh, viewers and friends and audiences of side by side um Take us back in time, you know, since you okay. were a little child. Um, I mean, where, where, where should I start in terms Go of... Go as far as your memory goes <laughs> until it stops recording, basically. Rewind it back. Yeah, well, I guess in terms of what most people know me for is for, for my music composition, production, songwriting, and I guess some of my own singles. So I guess ever since... I was probably about 14, 15. I went to a, I actually went to a grammar school for boys that put a heavy, heavy sort of influence on me in terms of design and technology and music production, piano, learning all that side of stuff because that was what their values were. And luckily for me, I was able to attend that school. It was up in Northampton, really, really well known school. And I guess that's where it moulded me in terms of the arts and the creative side of things. Uh, I got into a bit of drama as well. Uh, I was on stage at a really lovely stage. So kind of like high school musical. Amazing. Um, so there was so many talented people. So I would probably say that I was at the bottom in terms of talent scale because there were so many other guys and girls that were there playing piano, trumpet, violin, guitar, all of that stuff, singing, dancing, tap dancing, all of that stuff. So you'd see, you'd, you'd, you'd come in and maybe sometimes you'd, you'd go through the, the, I guess, the arts hall and you'd see some people doing some amazing paintings and you'd see some people, you know, learning their craft, basically. And that's where it formed my love for the arts in general, not just music, but I obviously chose the music side, music tech side. Came home one day and my dad had bought me a... Uh, a brand new iMac so it was wow. you know the, it was a thick one read re, and it had the, the cd drive in the side wow and i was I, I think it was probably for my 15th birthday maybe 14 15 but i was very lucky so, amazing uh, you know we, we, no, many of us i mean i guess most of us couldn't even dream of have, owning a mac i mean i only got a mac probably about five years ago now for for work purposes yeah exactly i was extremely lucky and my, my dad uh, bless him. He, he he went and got me it because I've been <clears> saying I want to do the music production side. I want to do this. I want to record my stuff because I had all these ideas and we used to like rap in the playground and write songs and all of this stuff. Anyways, getting on that was a was a game changer for me because it had all the software. It was at the time it was like top spec as well, so I was able to basically get in and started off with a program called GarageBand. And it's like the training wheels to get onto another program called Logic Pro, which is like the, I guess, the uh, high-end DAW, which is, is like a digital audio workspace where you do all the stuff. Um, and I'm getting into a lot of jargon. So for those listeners, <laughs> it's just basically where you make the magic happen. And once I'd basically honed that craft, that's what led me into now, where I am today. 
Thus, starting from 15, I want to go, if you, if you will, if I remember. You know, <laughs> a, a bit backward. Where did that inspiration even come from? You know, the, 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 the leaningness towards, I guess, art and music. Well, I was always a good artist in terms of just, if I do so say, myself, say so myself, I always loved drawing, painting. And I think for me, and it's only now as, a, as an adult, I know you said go back, but as an adult, I've, I've, I've now realised I've probably got traits of ADHD, which is like my brain's constantly just, it's, it's hard to put the, the brakes on. So I'm, I'm not formally diagnosed or anything, but I would say just but as you get older, you understand yourself and you, and you see your children as well and you, you kind of look deeper within yourself and you think, oh, why do I always do this? Why, why can I never sort of slow down? Why am I always on this and this and the next thing? And I can't sort of, I'm always busy, basically. My brain's moving at 100 miles an hour. And I think probably when we were younger, when I was younger, they didn't have the... Everyone's got a diagnosis now. You're, you're either got some form of autism or ADHD or ADD. Um, and I think for me... I was always like that. And it's only now as an adult I've realised. So basically, if you're telling me to take it back, that's probably how it was then. I just didn't realise what it was. And the creative arts and things like sitting down and drawing or writing a song, things like that would Were you good at brain. school with, with arts? Did you get like top marks? Yeah, or top something? marks, top marks. That was designer technology, art, that was like A's. A's and your me. father probably noticed, okay, this is this is his strength, and let's kind of hone in on that strength. Let's kind of cultivate cultivate that strength. Yeah, it's funny because Abba was always at work in the restaurant, five seven days a week. He'd come home on the Sunday, have a nap, maybe have his bat salam in the in the wow. in, in the afternoon, and like... then um, Sunday night gone rest for the rest of the week. So yeah. the fact that he even picked that up. Uh, it shows how much attention he paid to us when he was at home for the short periods of time that he was. So, yeah, that's that's quite crazy. Once he, now that I've sort of dissected that, because yeah, he wasn't never home. So the fact yeah. that he was able to pinpoint, oh, my son wants this, he likes doing that. It shows that he really listened. And that's to a us. huge investment as well. I mean, back then, how much was it? What two grand, two and a half grand? Three Maybe grand? I don't even know. I don't know. That's the thing. That's how. Yeah. That's, I, it just it was just there. Amazing, it was amazing. There. So. In school, when you were going to school, obviously from what I know of you, you are a leader in, in whatever you're doing, in whether it's, and I'm sure we'll kind of unpack that as we go along in this conversation. You're a businessman, you're a family man, you're a composer, and that, of course, takes a lot of leadership skills. Did you know at school that you had some leadership traits or, or were you the guy who who always wanted something and you were just kind of sitting in the corner, but you knew in your mind that you wanted something, but you don't want to kind of express that because there's other loud people in the classroom. So I initially grew up, we, we grew up in Hackney. And at the time, Hackney in the 1995, mid-90s onwards, wasn't a great area. And luckily for me, we were able to move to Northampton, as I mentioned earlier. For me, going from that, to somewhere like Northampton, to a grammar school where there were certain children from certain backgrounds that were obviously, you know, in terms of where they are in life. Obviously, we were like, what, second generation? Bangladesh? Bangladeshis were coming in in terms of, I think my, my mum's got a degree, which was actually very, um, I mean, that's, it's, not, it's not common. Uh, so for me, actually going into a school like that, I wouldn't say I was a leader straight away. However, I was surrounded by children that had been instilled with a lot of confidence, a lot of love, a lot of guidance. Amazing. And that were around, obviously, parents that had businesses, that had nice things, that had really nice homes, that did extracurricular activities, football, music, like I was mentioning, all the art, design, all of this stuff. So I was thrust into a... A, a swimming pool, I, I'd say, of, of, of other people that were super, super talented, super, like, on, on their game, basically. Amazing. And I, and I had to catch up. So when I started in year seven, it was crazy for me because I had a lot of enthusiasm, but I was kind of a diamond in the rough. Ah. So for me to be around those students, and, and that's what I say, I've got two, two kids now, 
it, it's about the environment that kids grow up in more so even than where they're at, at home. So you can you can love your kids as much in, as you can at home. But I found that my tutors, my the people that you know, my PE teachers, all of the people that were around me, my and my the, my fellow classmates, they were the people that probably uh, morphed me into more of maybe have more leadership. So I wouldn't say I'm naturally a leader, but I picked up skills that have allowed me to excel more in what I do now. So obviously, you've been um, saying a lot around family structure and I think this is something that we kind of witness nowadays in our modern era that we live in where the structure or that kind of unit family unit is not really taken kind of very seriously like for example divorce rates are kind of a sky high you know people are getting divorced right left and center because they can't get along with each other or I mean do you think if you hadn't have that Upbring, upbringing or the environment, things could have been slightly different for you? It's hard to say because you, you, you don't know an outcome. But yeah. the outcome that I did have was via the product of having a mum that was at home, that was attentive to us, a dad that was at work, doing what he can to keep the roof over our head, to keep food on the table, and I had two lovely sisters. I've got, I've got to, I've had, I've got two lovely <laughs> sisters. Um, sometimes, Shout out some, to the sisters. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wish them away. But yeah, without them as well, just having a good family base, uh, a a constant to come home to from from school or whatever you're what you're doing outside, that that provides a safety net to keep. I think your 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 mental state stable because you know what you're coming back to. I think for children, stability and routine Absolutely. is key. Without that, it's just chaos. Chaos, 100%. Because I remember um, when we migrated to the UK back in 1997. And at that time, we didn't value those things. And dad, obviously, we're quite religious in terms of background. Um, we would sit on the floor and eat in the kitchen. <laughs> And there was a set time for lunch and dinner and whatever, breakfast, maybe not so much. But there was a fixed time for at least dinner and everyone had to sit around that floor and eat together. And now that I look back, I was like, wow. Because we do enjoy a strong bond amongst our brothers and mm. sisters within our family members. And, and I think dad kind of, uh, maybe he did it on purpose to make sure that unit is maintained, that unity is maintained. Mm. It's definitely important, and what you're saying to me is actually quite a beautiful thing. Um, I was actually thinking about what when you were telling me about that, I was imagining it, and I was imagining how we were as well. Because you, you're lucky you had you, you obviously dad was around, we didn't have that, it was just my mum and my sister at the time. Obviously, my, my younger sister is actually 12, so she came along years and years later, so it was just me, my sister, and my mum most of the time. Um, especially when we were in Northampton, we moved away from my nanny and my khalas and everybody, it was just us. And yeah, we, we, I mean, we didn't per se eat on the floor, which is obviously it's a lovely sunnah yeah. and it's, it's, it's a nice way, but to be together, as you just mentioned, to eat at the table together, have a conversation, because everyone's life so busy, yeah. that's probably, especially now, more than how it was before for now, it's, it's important to do that. I try to do that with my son when he's on his high chair. He, he may have his iPad on the side, but at least I know that I'm right there sitting there. I can supervise him. He knows that I'm meeting with him. I'm, you know, trying to get my, my wife's side of the table because sometimes she's with a newborn. And we try. We try our best to get together. That's the only time you get to sit down and be appreciative and... Amazing. And I guess for you, knowing that your father was, was around, although he wasn't kind of physically there, but you guys kind of had that reassurance that that is always there. So that's, that's, that's very good. Now, moving forward, um, obviously, I think the, generally the vibe is or the, the understanding is people think you're, you were always a Londoner and you've always been a Londoner. But obviously people don't know that you've kind of moved away from London to Northampton. And then when did you come back and what made you come back? I came back for university. I came okay. back for university. I was I, I grew up and made my core relationships, and I think my core, uh, my my core, growing in terms of um, who I am as a person now. I did that all in Northampton. It's not from London, so I actually wouldn't say I'm a Londoner. 
I would say I was I was born in London and I, I grew up and and learned how to be a me basically uh, in Northampton. So um, yes, I think I think it was a a, a good decision because. I, I see certain things in life, especially now with all the stabbings and you've got the kids up to certain craziness. Even recently, I don't know when this podcast is going to come out, but the recent stabbings of the girl and stuff, it scares the life out of me. And I don't even know if I want to uh, stay in and around or near. Cause I'm not in London at the moment. I'm in on the outskirts, but even just trying to get yeah. as far, far away as possible. So it's scary. It is scary because um, recently we, we had this, we went to this premiere and I kind of, obviously we met to met up in that premiere and it was about, you know, if only, and, 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 and that drama or that, that whole piece was around, you know, disadvantage or being in a circumstance and where you find yourself in a circumstance and, and you kind of just end up, you know, at a certain place in life. And it's, it's quite, it was very sad. Mm-hmm. It was very sad. And, and I guess for me as well, it's, it's, it's very concerning. It's very concerning. And I don't know what I would do, but I'm definitely looking at, you know, moving out of. It's a, it's a good segue, actually, um, touching on the, the If Only movie. So so for those that are listening that, that, that don't know um what what you just mentioned there it's a it's a movie that was funded by town hamlet's homes uh, and, the, and the council effectively for, for a bunch of creatives to come together so they picked people um so shout out filmers such as mazi kazi directors isla abdul rahman and the rest of the team uh that they were commissioned to create a a, a piece of work that would then go out to all of the schools as a to create awareness of the, the whole premise of if only, so if only I didn't do this yeah. and I did this, I made the, the you know different decision, how would my life turn out? So the, the, there's a lot of if only moments that happen within that movie. And I was personally involved through the music composition side just to create that emotion. Because you, you, you tell a story and I think music does come into film to, to evoke that emotion in, in I think in music is real. I mean, without music, imagine watching a movie without like the background sounds and tracks. You're not going to get those emotions. It's just people talking. Yeah, and sometimes it's not even, I wouldn't even say it's music per se. Sometimes it's like you just said, um, I've had to do a lot of, you know, draw, drone noises or just atmospheric sounds and yeah. things like that. Without that, you don't feel like you're immersed into into the film. But just, just to take it back... Um, you know, not not spend too much time on the technical aspect of it. Just just in terms of the message of of that film, I think it was a great piece. And for me, I feel like I lived the if only moment. That actually, I I was lucky enough that my parents decided to move out and do the best for me and concentrate for me because I didn't, I wasn't. All of those uh, themes within that movie or in that short film, which should be out soon, but I don't know the the, the, the ins and outs of when it's going to be out and stuff. That's still in there. Definitely so, one to watch out for, though. Yeah, definitely it's... one to watch out for. But I, I can't relate. I'm I'm kind of I'm so grateful that I can't relate to any of those. You know, I had sin- the same. I had the same feeling, although it was very sad towards the end. And I was like, does this really happen? And, and, because and I'm so it. disconnected from, and, and, from and that that's world. It. And we're blessed and we're, 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 we're truly blessed to, to be disconnected from that world. But there are people and I've got friends that have been in, in that life. And we heard in the screening how people have been in that life and have come out the other end somehow. But you can see how it's left a scar on them. Yeah. And it happens every single day. And like I said, you've got kids. I've got kids now. It's like a completely different world that we live in because, yes, it. I mean, it probably did happen before, and we because of social media and stuff, we we just didn't know about it then, and we know about it now. So the fact that we do know about it, and it's in our faces every single day, it's just as parents, it's, you're it's just, hard you're to, just it's hard to avoid. Yeah. And, and and to be honest, you know, I always want to kind of, I mean, me even, and I'm sure yourself as well. When we do what we do, whether it's excelling in business or maintaining our kind of profile or the image that we, I mean, try very hard to maintain while being Islamic at the same time in business, in the mainstream space, is to, I guess, one way to inspire people to say, hey, you know what? We also come from Bangladesh. We also kind of migrated uh, only a few years ago. And if we can do it, then then honestly, I know it's as cliche as it sounds. Anyone can do it. Yeah. Honestly, if you stay at it 
for three years, like non-stop, mm. grind at it. Honestly, there will be some results one way or another. 100% and, and definitely within the British Bangladeshi sphere. So people like yourself, myself, and there's other people that you've had on this podcast and you know a couple of the people that I've mentioned just now, they're, they're doing amazing things. And I feel like, yes, as you just mentioned, if you can stick at something and really... You know, I like have that. I keep bringing it back to the movie, but that if only you make the right decision and you stick to it, then, you know, it's always going to be positive. And definitely. And having said that, also, <laughs> there are some people who just don't have that. And unfortunately, and you know what, for those people, it's OK to be in a job. You don't need to be a businessman. You don't need to be this. And you, like you don't, although we all have aspirations and wishes and wants, but sometimes we just have to be realistic. And mm. if if only... And if not only if you have that skill, then I guess no, just it's okay to have a good job, but be good at it though. Don't 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 try and like you know be half good at it or or average at it. So I always say to people like, it's okay to have a job. It's not there's nothing wrong with it. You can be a star within your job mm-hmm. and and keep going. Um, now moving on, you you done your university in London. What what did you kind of graduate as? Uh, in eco- <laughs> Funnily enough, I I chose the thing that just sounded most, uh, I guess, sensible. So I did economics. And I Amazing. just thought, I just thought, okay, well, this is kind of broad. I could get into, I could learn a bit about business. I can understand how, you know, the economy works, obviously, how, how, how the country runs, a bit about statistics. So it was a bit of everything. And I think it was for me because I didn't know what I really wanted to go into because I was involved in arts and cr- creative stuff, but I didn't really, I, I, I don't want to sound sound sort of horrible to all the people that have done an art major, but I, I felt at the time, whether it's right or wrong, um, I, I didn't feel like I should spend all of that money. Um, what was it? Because I, I went when it was... Um, so how much is it now? The the the, the, the what nine grand, ten grand? Yeah, so I, I went when it was like the, the higher rate. So I think before it was at three thousand pounds, and then Liberal Democrats came in, and it, I'm sure you remember they came in and failed to to cap the, the 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 money that you need to go to university. So, anyways, I was unlucky enough to be that cohort of students to come in at the higher rate. So I just said to myself, I need to do something that's going to at least help me in life a little bit to understand the world a little bit more because you, you, they don't touch on that in school. I'm not going to go do an art or music because I can do that in my own time. I don't need to spend... You're a very smart 30, guy, 000. you know. But you kind of like, you took a very logical approach in you, even in selecting a subject. It wasn't like, oh, I need to be an accountant because everyone else is becoming, becoming an accountant or a lawyer because someone else said so or my parents said so. You kind of took a very systematic logical approach to your yeah well i decision. tried to i mean i, I, I definitely tried to just uh, as, as i mentioned to be as broad as possible but something that's sensible that will help me in real the real world situation because there's always whether it's in business whether you're as you mentioned before you you you've got a job there's always the issue of supply demand and then equilibrium and yeah. where, where everything fits in that and that's how i guess in a nutshell, if you're going to describe how we all live, that's what it is. It's supply I mean, demand. Economic is is definitely a, is a backbone of everything that we do. Yeah. You know, even in our own life, you know, if you don't have your economics kind of sorted in balance, then you're in debt. Or or or, or if I guess if you're super rich, then of course the economics is in your favour. But if it's the other way around, then you're yeah, and you messed. need to know how to you need to know how to work the economy. You need to understand about. I mean, especially now we're in. I hate saying that that phrase, but the cost of living crisis. I mean, the some the some, world of Klarna, where you're buying food even people with Klarna, Klarna. Yeah, K- KFC. They're like Klarna. You can buy that Klarna KFC. Madness. So you know, understanding being financially literate about interest rates and debt and financing. And how the banks work, because people just think, oh, a bank's just somewhere, I'll just put my money. They, they don't understand how a bank actually works. And, you know, stocks and shares and, and, and business and, and, you know, income expenditure, all of this stuff that, you know, you're not taught at school. I was, I was lucky to be exposed to a university and take it on into, because even within music and stuff, people don't realise it's a, it's a business. It's, it's a business first. Yeah, when you're younger, you're doing it for fun and you might do it for 
a bit of um, social media clout or, or some fame. But actually, if you're, se- if you're a serious person, you can't sit there as a 30, 40 year old just making beats in your room. You'll end up just sofa surfing, being a loser. You, yeah. you, like I'll be honest with you, there, there are some people out there that are just doing music for either the clout or just because they have a genuine passion for it which is completely fine. However, they fail to understand that. H- how do you monetize that? Because without that, you can't live. You can't, you can't just sit in your mom's bed, you, you, yeah. your, your childhood bedroom in your mum or dad's house and just be making beats, yeah, getting fat not, and doing It, 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 do, it not, doesn't make sense. No. It doesn't work. Now, you mentioned banks. <laughs> how does it work? I mean... <laughs> well, now, now you put me in the spot. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to get into the ins and outs. I'm going to get just completely just as, talk to me as if like I don't know anything. Talk to me in layman's terms. Like, you no, know, what is banks and you no? Know, how does well, it, a it's a business, a business, right? Yeah. A bank's a business. A bank is a business. So uh, everybody's got a bank. they they're, they're like a monopoly on on what, how you you know in, in a trans money monetary transaction they are the monopoly of how that whole system works and obviously recently we've understood about you know uh, bin tech and all of the i guess electronic type of money that they're trying to to bring in however the the banks are the foundation of how you 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 move and transact money that's that's how i would and, and, and ultimately a it's a business and they've got a business to run and, and I suppose we've got are a business and they make money off the interest and they make money as soon as you put money in your account. It's not physically there. It's it's the it's, money's it's invested, invested somewhere else. Yeah. It's invested, it's somewhere else and you and, and for it to work and for you to get your money for any your same money back, you you you, you, you need that all to work. If it crumbles which you found out in 2008 and um, various other economic collapses. You've like, it's, it, and, and, and it's funny because it's a scary time at the moment because of the way, again, interest rates, they're, they're trying to basically slow down the economy so then prices come down. All of this stuff you learn at school. And it's really interesting because if you don't understand that, I don't want to bore your listeners to go into it because this is not a yeah. fi- fi- financial times podcast. But yeah, if you don't understand that, you're going to be the you loser. You definitely need to understand money and how money works. Yeah, you're going to be a loser if you don't, yeah, unfortunately. No, absolutely. Now, you've done e- economics in, yeah. in university. <laughs> so everyone thinks you're a kind of musician, composer, and that's the only life that you live. But obviously, for I know you and there's many kind of hats you wear, you know, um, outside of your music career. I would probably say that's probably about forty percent or thirty percent of your what you what you actually do in reality. Mm. Yeah, you, you're you're prob- you're right. And actually, as I've got an older and I've got kids, I don't actually like the econ. I'll be honest, I don't like the connotation that I'm just a music person because with music comes so much more in mm-hmm. terms of in terms of reputation. You know, when they talk about a, a, a company and they talk about the the reputational aspects as well as the regulatory aspects that you need to I, I see as the same I'm, I'm a person and I have my reputation I have you know in within the community I have um, you know with my especially now you've got kids and a family and there's certain aspects of music that I love in terms of I love doing the music I love making it I love the creative aspects of it so would you say you're like an architect of music architect and a designer or interior designer if i was to kind of yeah, put it in a I, building I, I'd term i'd probably like to to see myself more as that as because you, as soon as you say oh i'm a singer or i'm an artist and people i guess singer is a builder the, the one that just goes and does the stuff but the there's, architect there's, i think there's there's nothing wrong with and this is what i want to make clear there's nothing wrong with being a singer or an artist or whatever but unfortunately because of the way society has now got into this like distasteful way of doing things using music that the, the, the way music is now produced on mass and the type of sub- subject matter it's, it's actually crazy. crazy and so for me i feel like my you know if i if i don't be careful my, my your reputation could get muddied with oh he's a singer so he must go and do things at clubs and do not that that's wrong some people some that's their people's lifestyle and stuff but again i need to be and i know we weren't we weren't going to touch on the whole music is haram thing but <laughs> yeah. in terms of um but in terms of yeah what what you want to associate yourself with 
it's, it's for me, I'm at a crossroad in my life because as you mentioned, I've got so many hats. I mean, get into it. I've got I've got my businesses, I've got my homes, I've got my investments, I've got, you know, lots of things going on. And I don't want to be seen as some a one dimensional person that has potentially negative connotations yeah, to it. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's where I'm at at the moment. Where You're at I that love crossroad and yeah. Yeah, I love I love doing I've got I do a passion and I I do make money from it as well, which is which is the main thing which I just mentioned yeah. earlier. You need to make it into business. However, um it's about now navigating myself. Okay, fine, I'm gonna do my music, but it's more about music design or music production or whether you know, like film scoring, stuff like that. Yeah. Where where it's um yeah, where it's just seen as more of a profession as a as a hobby. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Understood. Hey guys, I hope you have been enjoying today's episode with my brother, my friend and business associate Bilal Shahid, who is a musician, who is a composer and who I would consider to be more like a strategist. So if you have been enjoying today's episode, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you have taken any notes and if you have learned anything from today's episode, then feel free to share with your friends. Now let's get back straight into the show. You do when, so when you do your compositions or whether whether it's music or singing or, or production, you tend to do the mix of Bangla and English. You know, you love that whole thing. And what inspired you to kind of kind of angle or position yourself for that space, Bangla English mix? So again, I keep going back to business because any business needs a USP, a unique selling point. And if you're just an artist that's just putting out whatever that you're not really like, what's your story? What's your background? So any brand, any brand, because I'll see myself as a brand as well as the companies that I represent. I myself, Bilal Shahid, the Bangla boy. Is Bilal a, is, Shahid, yeah. let's get it is started. It's is, yeah, is, yeah. is, is, is a brand and it's about how, how I marketed that brand. So as a brand, okay, so I'm, I'm from... Uh, my, my family are from Bangladesh. I speak Sileti. I like doing music. Uh, I, I I love doing a bit of R&B, doing a bit of Afrobeats, all of that stuff. So then what is my what makes me unique from all these other brands out there? So other singers. And well, what makes me unique is my language, is the fact that I can speak my language. How many people can actually... You might say lots of people can sing in Bangla because you've got some amazing artists and stuff. But actually then you, you decrease the pool by saying, okay, well, how many people are doing English and this fusion of Bangla? Then you probably think, oh, maybe about five people. And some of them, you, you, you know, straight away, um, even from ra- around like East London and stuff. Um, and there's a couple in, in America mm-hmm. and a few emerging in Bangladesh now as well. But still it's less than 10, like ones that are really doing really wow. well. So then I've gone from thousands and thousands of artists and singers to now decreasing my competition to maybe 10, 10 people. And within that competition, I've got a, a pool of people that I can target a niche. I'd rather be the top of my niche than trying to basically disappear. And within. that is such a business thing, isn't it, as well? You know, being the best at your game, yeah. which is your niche. And, and it's fantastic. And, and that's and, why, uh, so in a nutshell, that, that, that's why I decided to say, okay, well, my language is, and I'm proud of my language as well, there's all these other things, but the main thing is, as a as a musician, as a businessman, as a brand, that's my USP, that's what I want to do, these are the fans that I want to appease, these are the people that I want, that I know that will buy my product because they are the people that are most likely to, to uh, I guess, connect with my music. Because most people would not connect to my music because I'm not from I'm not talking about what they they talk about what well, may 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 be from or talk about I can't talk about gangster rap mm-hmm. and all this stuff because I'm not that sort of person. I mean, your stuff are pretty clean, isn't it? In yeah, yeah, exactly. Of, it's it's I mean, more I, about love and you know. Yeah, yeah because yeah, I'm not romantic. I'm not really I, I I would be a hypocrite if I was to start doing load of roadman stuff. And yeah. I've tried it. I've, I've done a video. There was one song that I did "Where You Been," where I wanted to just do it because yeah. it was like it was it was fun. I was like, oh, let me try it." Yeah. But then afterwards, you know, I was thinking to myself, oh, "I don't really like it," and it's because it was just the persona. Like yeah, it, was it just doesn't like just a, go with your. It doesn't kind go of with my vibe. And I was yeah. like, "Yeah, maybe not. That didn't work out." Yeah. And yeah, that was like a failed project. Yeah. Um, 
And I, I, I quickly realized if you're not true to yourself within art, then it's not it's not gonna work. You can't just try and be somebody and try and fit in a space because it's it, the you, you, how genuine it is comes through. Okay, now. Where are you most popular in? Which country? Is it the UK or Bangladesh or the USA? Where is your so, kind of... Where? If you looked at my demographics on Spotify, so they give you like a breakdown of your of your demographics. So it is obviously the UK because I'm from here. And then it goes to Dhaka, Chittagong, Canada. Amazing. And then New York, Queens. I think those are the top. So... Yeah, it's weird, and, and, and that's probably where... Because in New York, what you find, you, there's a big Bangla community there. Obviously, Dhaka, there's a big Bangla community. Chitt- Chittagong, big Bangla community. Um, Not so much as Silet? No, it's funny enough, yeah. I mean, the, on, on YouTube, maybe. May, maybe it's a case of... Maybe because not as many people can afford Spotify. True. Maybe true. it's a case of yeah. maybe it's a case of reporting there yeah. that it's not picked up. But on YouTube, if you go onto my YouTube views and millions of views, it's all oh I'm Rasileti by <laughs> Sileti Josh by yeah. da, 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 all of this stuff. Yeah, make more Sileti songs yeah. by I, I, you know I'm by like, all of these things. So you know that it's all from it's there. The, it, the, the, it, yeah, yeah, from Sileti. So YouTube, it, it's different mediums. So like I said, paid for more paid stuff is probably places where the economy allows for them to use that service whereas YouTube is free for everybody yeah true so you've done university you've kind of got into music obviously while you were very young um, and then you started working you also had a corporate job it's not just you went from music to then business i mean we'll, that's the most expi- exciting part of this mm-hmm. i guess discussion that i want to get to which is your business hat yes. obviously we've spoken briefly about your kind of logics and understanding so you've done work i mean do you still work or yeah do- i've still oh, got, you I've do. still i've still i've still got my 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 full time job no way and i i won't i won't give that up until everything else is earning at least three and a half, four times what my day job gives me. And I think that's sensible. So how, like... How, that's why you see all these bags. That's why you see these bags and my hair's all over the place. So how many hours do you sleep? Well, this morning, so last night I went to bed at just before midnight because I wanted to spend at least an hour with my wife, just, you know, just decompressing Mm -hmm. and having a chat and having some, some, you know, tea uh, in the evening after put the kids to sleep. And then... Probably four hours, I'll be honest. Four hours because my toddler wakes me Is up. Is that quite a regular occurrence in your life? Yeah, but yeah, 60% of the, 60, 70% of the week, that's what I will, you know, four, four, four or five hours of sleep, I think. No and way. And then sporadic power naps. That is mad. Yeah. That but is I crazy. I thought, I thought I was doing great, you know, six hours, six and a half hours, seven hours but your, if your I'm lucky. Are, your, your kids are a bit older though. When, I think once my, my son's older and I've got a newborn as well, so I've got a two, I've got two, two and a half, imagine I've got a two and a half year old and a two, three month old. So that combination wow, is lethal for your sleepers. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't say, I've, I've, there's enough time in the day for me to, to remotely run my businesses in the weekends and in the evenings do the production side of things, do my day job, because luckily it's not... I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it if it was an office job. I don't have an office job. We've got more of a... Um, con- it's more of like a con- con- consultation type type role that I've got. So it allows me a bit more freedom. What do you not. do in your job? What so is I, it? I'm, I am, and, and this is a first, because no one actually knows. I don't, I don't post this stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a risk and control manager for, uh, for, for the bank. I'm not gonna say which bank. Marshall, just in case. Like so, you're, so, bro, you're super smart, man. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I feel blessed to be around you. Well, my colleagues, well, my colleagues are super smart. Again, I'd say that I've I've been lucky to enter spaces and learn from colleagues, fellow students, people around me who are super super smart and learn their ways. Forgive me for this because. Until we met last time, like I think about six, seven months or whenever, I, th- I can't remember. Yeah. I I also didn't know that you had all these other hats that you were. I know you were kind of working and I thought that's the only thing that you do. But when you kind of came up with, 
you know, this, like this franchise and that franchise that you're owner of and blah, blah, blah. Probably confused. Was, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, like, Whoa, Whoa, like, like are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> like, I need to see some proofs, bro. Yeah. And then uh, you were saying that um, you were opening Heavenly Desserts in uh, Beckton. Gal- Galleons Reach? Galleons Reach. So we've got a Heavenly Desserts in Rushton. That's a family run business. And then we've got one in, in um, yeah, open, open on recently this year, earlier this year in Galleons Reach. And me and two other partners were opening an Africana in Coventry. And um, as I mentioned off off air, we were, uh, we're, we're just literally going through, through some planning permission nightmare stuff. So, yeah, lo- lots of stuff. So, mashallah, like, you know, you, do you like use any project management tools for yourself? Like, okay, I need to do this, I need to do that. Or is it just kind of your to-do list and you just kind of go with yeah, the to-do I'll, list. Yeah, I'll be honest, I've got I've got a I've got a notepad at home, old super old school. I've got I've got at the top it says personal to do. So from the top of my head it says pay water bill <laughs> because I don't like doing the direct debit stuff. There's so pay pay water bill, mow the lawn and uh clean clean the car. So those are the three things for example that I've got at the moment because I've done all the other stuff. In terms of like pay council tax, all of that stuff. I've done all that stuff. And then it says business side of things. So then, you know, the, the reason why I was potentially not going to come to this podcast is because it's, it's VAT, VAT return um, period for me. Mm-hmm. I've got invoices. The that most my... stressful time. I mean, obviously, normally people are doing it. I'm sure you've got your people doing it. But when it doesn't kind of, when something involves your input, it's just... Yeah, so, I, yeah so, you know, the accountants have come back, lots of stuff. So then I've got that on my to-do list. I've got, you know, buy, buy lights, um, return some stuff, um, make, uh, you know, look at alternative um, business bank rates to try and move because we're trying to move onto, onto a different um, business banking, stuff like that. And then I've got my music stuff, mix and master for... Trouble. So he's like another artist that I'm working with. S- send this for blah, blah, blah. Send this for review. And then for work, separate page, I've got a whole list of things to do. And that's, you know, separate. So I have to get through all of that, whether it's in the evening, in the morning, in dotted around, I will make sure I get through that. So it's wow. just nice, super old school. So it's not all just kind of automatic. Many people think business, businessmen are just successful, but they're just successful suddenly uh, no. through sheer luck no and, and i wouldn't say that i'm six just just because you open a business doesn't mean you're successful I, i'm i'm up to here in debt so i'll be successful you've got a business plan everyone knows first year loss second year potentially loss um you'd like to break even third fourth fifth year and that's like your 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 four yop four year operating you know that that's how you 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 set out your stall and that's what you'd give the bank for example if you ever to wanted to get into loan and stuff like that but yeah so right now i wouldn't say that i'm successful i would say that i've taken a huge risk and a huge gamble and in terms of all my capital is now tied up yeah and, and this is what some people don't understand oh you're a businessman oh you've got lots of um uh, you've got stores you've got their operational yeah, I've had to. That's pay a, more of the reason why you don't have money. <laughs> that's actually, and, and and this is the thing, and a lot of my friends will think, oh, that means you've got money to do stuff, and I'm just like, nah, man. Like it might look like I'm doing well, but you have probably got more monthly cash flow than me. Yeah, because all my capital, all my savings, I I I have in my whole life, I've never had more than a thousand pounds in my savings. I'll be honest, and that's always because on the move. It's always out. It's always out. It's never been in just sitting in my bank. Um, I don't know why. I need to slow down at some point. Yeah, um, I think there will be a time where you will automatically. I think I'm kind of slowly edging towards that kind of phase in my life where, just like you, like everything is a ten year plan. Everything is like vision, vision, vision. And then I think I had a very hard knock during mm. pandemic. Where I said, "What the hell am I doing? Like, why mm. is everything ten years? What about today?" Mm. And that moment came when when my daughter was saying can we go to the sweet shop? And I looked in my pocket, I was like, there's nothing there. I was like, <laughs> oh. damn, people know me as this, that person, but there's some fundamentally kind of mal- malfunctioning happening within my thinking and I need to correct that. And then that's when I kind of s- sat on my table and I said, okay, this is what I need today. This is what I need my now immediately. And then yes, you still have your vision and your 10 year plan, but you still have to have your immediate plan. Yeah, you have to enjoy today because 
it, it, I think it was like, it was something that I saw on TikTok actually. And I don't like quoting things off TikTok because, but this one was actually really good. It was it was like an audio of some woman, and she was saying one day, and I'm gonna paraphrase this because it's quite a long thing. But she said one day the house that you've worked so hard to build and make nice will be owned by some complete stranger. Then the woman said, you know, the 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 people, the the cars and all the fancy things that you you required will be crumpled with rust, probably made into some other thing, whatever, and. It really and and it really struck me. And she was like, even the people that you know that you love, because how many people do you know? Your great 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 granddad, you know, you no. may not even have a picture of yeah, him no, or, or no. great 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 grandmother. So even the people that you love and raise at the moment, their children's children won't even think about you. It's not a bad thing. It's just that's what happens. That's just it's like the way the of life. life. That's the how world, it works. The world the world moves on. So that something like that, I, I, and I tried to stick that in my head. Because it was really powerful for me to remember that, yeah, you know what, all of this stuff is 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 temporary, and you need to enjoy it now. Like my kids, I'm gonna enjoy my kids. I'm gonna try Definitely. and be present for them. Hundred percent. I'm gonna bro. try, and yes, end of the day, you everything's relative. You don't want to just settle and be like, because because the world moves as well while you're while you're still alive. But I think for me, I'm I'm not here trying to be a, a, a multi millionaire. Because actually, and if I do, because of what I, I'm not going to kill myself. I'm not going to kill myself to become that because I know that actually just by having a couple of thousand pounds. And, and again, this is quite, um, even saying that a couple of thousand, just a couple of thousand people don't have nothing at the end of the yeah, month. Some people just, just are to, like, just, not even earning that. Yeah. Just so, so I wouldn't even put a number to it. I say just to have some expendable income so I can, you know, make memories with my children and my family and enjoy my house and my mum and, and look after my family when they need me and, and, and enjoy times with my friends and make memories. That's that's all you need to do. That's, Absolutely. Especially for us, because we're very blessed to live in. I know there's lots of issues in the country, which I'm not going to get into. Yeah. <laughs> as I go on another podcast. But generally it's secure. You know. I mean, you know, you're. You're not worried about war or, or something war like yeah the moment know, yeah for now <laughs> for now yeah. at least yeah yeah you don't worry but about all of that stuff. so yeah so while, while while you're in this moment why don't you just do that all yeah. the other stuff who cares like who really cares I mean even uh, the only reason why like for example I I posted a video not too long ago I um I, I bought a new Porsche from the uh, um what do they call it car place whatever yeah. um the, the full court and again people need to understand that wasn't to to show off that was a business thing so i can so i can do a tax write-off mm-hmm. and and, I, and, and the thing is i have to be honest because i don't like fronting and doing whatever for me something like that is is nice because you can do it but i wouldn't have i wouldn't have gone and splashed all that my own money on that because it's no point yeah. one because of depreciation two because Cool, you got a nice car. Actually, more stress. You got to pay for all of the, you 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 got to um, pay for all of the. Uh, so stuff. to fix a brake pad, instead of it being two hundred pound in a normal car, it's this one's going to be like six hundred, eight hundred yeah, pounds. Yeah, and it takes you from A to B. And yeah, for business purposes, cool, great. But for but for for otherwise, unless you've got lots and lots and lots of money, which you know, where that which figure is great, just insignificant, just insignificant. Yeah. And I'm not at that stage yet, yeah. so. I'll be honest, the people, that, and this and this is what, unfortunately, on Instagram and stuff, people don't, are not honest. Yeah. They Or they're not, not that they're not honest, they allow people to come to their own conclusion. And, but the, uh, unfortunately, the way it's perceived is that, oh, wow, you're, you're a businessman, you've got this, you've got X amount of properties, you've got X amount of um, assets or whatever. But I'm just like, well, the only, the only time you can actually front and say that, yes, I'm successful, is do you own your assets outright? Is your business turning over a profit? Have you paid back all your loans associated with that? All your capital that you've invested, all the, all, the, all your running capital, all, all your the machinery, your capex, has that been paid off? Do you own it? Do today you own it when no one can come in and stick their hands in and say, right, I'm taking that away. I'm taking it away. Or is it a, a t- p- moment where you can say, oh, I'm going to, I can stop working today and it, nothing's going to happen because I can just close down the shop. I just close it. It's fine. I'll just pay the the uh, the, the business rates. 
that's the moment yeah. you can say, oh, I'm free. Yeah. You know, mortgage is paid off. And of course, family life kind of comes into play as well, having a stable kind of platform or family platform. Because imagine family is not in order as well at the same time. It's just a stressful time, isn't it? Yes. And, and this, is, this is it. It's about making time. Because I, I just said to you, I'm going to get X amount of hours of sleep. And that's because I want to wake up with my son, making breakfast in the morning getting ready for nursery and that's my quality time with him in the morning what missus will come down she'll take him to nursery i'll start my job and you know so on and so forth so it's, it's important to have a balance of that but again y- you can only have that really is once you're free in business the only time you're free in business is when everything is freehold done and dusted yeah. otherwise you're constantly on the wheel i can't stop i can't today say Oh, I'm just going to take a break for six months because all I've got is um, utility. No, I've got super, super high expenses that I've got to continue to churn over, churn mm-hmm. over, churn over. And until that's all gone, I can't relax. So that's where you have to see your limit. And, and that's about, you know, managing debt, money and being mm-hmm. smart with this. So you know how like banks, yeah. they say, oh, yeah, you f- to get a mortgage, it's four and a half times your income. We're going to do a stress test, da, 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 da. You need to do that individually. Stress test yourself. Like how much can you how much capacity do you have to make sure this wheel can turn without killing yourself? And I think I'm probably getting there. And yeah. then, and I'm only 30. People are like, oh, you're only young, you should be but Mashallah man, like at thirty, you know thirty one. Thirty one. Thirty one, <laughs> very active, you know, successful in, in terms of your profile in the in the in terms of public eye, um, business, you've got a stable, mashallah, job that you're kind of holding down quite nicely. Very smart in terms of thinking. And I'm, 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 I guess the strategy will work. I mean, the way it looks like that's inshallah. Inshallah. inshallah yeah, of course, everything. It works out. Um, one thing I was going to ask you, you, obviously you do music videos and everything. And that's, you know, your business. Mm. On one of the ones where you featured, I guess, your wife. Yeah. Did you get any backlash for me or did people try and cause any trouble? Or, or Because sometimes when people see like, okay, these people are happy, they're doing all these nice things together. There are some evil people out there who want to kind of throw a spanner in the works. Yeah, and, and, and I think initially it was great because it meant that I didn't have to like, Pretend, be in, and, you know, yeah, be in videos. Do something that you don't want to do. Yeah, being in videos with like models and stuff. I'm very, I'll be honest, um, by like, I'm a very introverted person, even though that it doesn't, f- I'm comfortable with you. I know yeah, you. If yeah. you were some random stranger, yeah. I, I, I'd probably be a bit more introverted. Yeah. But um, w- when, you know, so, so in that aspect for me, it was easier. I was my, my, my wife and it's a bit more real. Yeah. And I can, you know, do certain scenes with my wife like holding my wife's hand and stuff and it's not like i don't want to do that legit, with, basically, I, yeah i don't want to do that with you know as the models and stuff it's like it's yeah it, i don't like all that stuff um so that's that's the positive part but then obviously as a muslim we believe in nazar i'm not gonna get into the music side i'm literally just gonna the the, the output just speak side. about the general yeah, stuff yeah so about nazar and stuff and evil eye and all this stuff and people seeing you happy with your spouse and Blah blah blah. I'm putting that all on social media, and like you, you remember uh, me and my wife. We basically shot from in six months. We went from zero subscribers, maybe in eight months, to over a hundred thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel. No way. Back in 20- I remember you used to do those series. I think it was every week or something. Yeah, the, people the Bilal still. And pe- yeah, show. people still remember, it and that was such a great. And I know we at that point we were getting contracts from Pringles, uh, Nivea, wow, um, uh, Trainline. And we were getting really large figure contracts that were coming in to work with these companies. And I knew that if we continued, I probably could have charged upwards of 10, 20, 30,000 pounds per post or um, video and creative stuff. And we would have been made, I'll be honest with you, that was, it was a working model. We were at home. Um, it was easy. It was relatively, we garnered this fan base. We had a USB, everything was great. But then something just switched to me and I said to my wife, I said, you're gonna, we're gonna get to a point. So you know, like Ace Family and stuff, you're gonna get to a point where you're literally, like in Bang- Bangla, I'm, I'm gonna talk 
כולם מלואיזן. Yeah. Like you're gonna have to where start. does it all end where do you stop? where do you stop do you start filming your your pregnancy and you start filming your 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 birth and all this stuff that people yeah. like pay for subscription and it's yeah. crazy now and then now it's like evolved to like only, it's madness only fans what, what, and all yeah, that yeah, nonsense that is crazy. like it's craziness out here so for me this you you I did YouTube when YouTube was still like doing chubby bunny challenge or like the mm. ramen noodle eating stuff and mm. it was fun now it's turned into this like super real like you People follow people that are like they know every single thing that they're they doing. know you more than you know yourself and, and, and that's where it was heading like we, we were getting contracts um to go to like um the Maldives but they wanted us to record the whole thing like even like being together and running like, I'm gonna do that mm-hmm. sorry no you want me to film myself on the beach and stuff no no like it's it's so and, and waking up brushing your teeth we, bloody we were hell. asked to go on a channel no was it was it channel four show I can't remember I'm not gonna mention the company but it was it was a large it was a large broadcaster and they were gonna pay us a lot of money to go on this like like dating show kind of it's like a day you know these these yeah. um uh these um real um what they reality shows. reality TV yeah. shows and stuff and 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 that's when they said to us we got through to the last stage and they weren't really wanted us so they're like oh um and we were doing like a the last phase and they said oh would you mind kissing on or kissing on camera so we and I was just like oh. yeah I'm gonna have to end it there and that's when I realized that <laughs> that, that that industry and that's why you don't see a lot of South Asians or you don't see a lot of Muslims make it in that industry and Because it gets to that level where you know you're not going to compromise certain points I'm not I can't I have yeah. values and already I've compromised already a lot and I can't that's it that's my limit and and and, and I'm I sorry it's gonna... sorry and, and that's when I said yep yeah, we're stopping the YouTube stuff we're stopping all this stuff because um, if I can't be the best at what I do but to okay. be the best I have to give up all my values all my everything then this is the wrong business we need to come out this exit so we, wow. we stop that literally that week and that's why you've never seen another private all our videos you know just doing our thing and um yeah that was that I wrote you man I guess you put your family first and you know your 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 values and your disciplines um which guided you to kind of not entertain it any further and you have to it's just it's, like as I said if you want to do something you have to do it thinking I want to be the best at it and you If you can't be the best at it because it compromises your values like you, you could be the best I don't know <laughs> you could be the best drug dealer but you're not going to get into it because yeah, you, yeah. you don't want to deal with drugs yeah. stuff because it goes against your morals and yeah. whatever uh, and, and personally that's my view like, I'm a very competitive person if I do something I was like, oh, no, no. yeah you got be the best I, yeah. I want to be the best at it so um yeah they also wasn't feasible it was just... no that's um I guess um, that brings us quite nicely to to the end of, mm. of, of our show normally we do things like you know quick fire questions where we ask you like you know things like you know some questions so I'm gonna try some with you okay. just to kind of um, get a bit of understanding of, of who Bilal Shahid really is now iPhone or Android iPhone why it's just lovely UI I don't like um, Android's UI your message to Android users is Take your heart out and become I- uh, iPhone yeah, users. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, bangla food or um, non-bangla food? Bangla food. Silet or London? I've never been to Silet. I've been to Dhaka. I've never been to Silet. Wow. I'm going to get cussed in the comments. Like, yo. Oh, yo, you've never been to Silet. So where are you from back home then? <laughs> I'm from Bishnat. Mate, Masni. we need to go Silet, you know? Yeah, but... I like I'd love to go to Silla. I I I really want to go. I do really want to go. So if you ever plan the trip. No, definitely. I think we'll we're going to we're going to do you. something. If I go with you and I'll, I'll Yeah, go. we're going to go places inshallah. And obviously we met up last year quite accidentally when you were yeah, doing the BBC Dhaka. thing yeah, um, with Dhaka. Nadia Ali um in Dhaka and that was a very nice uh, yeah, very nice time. Yeah, definitely you in Silla inshallah. Yeah, that yeah, be inshallah. nice. Inshallah. So Bilal bhai once again, thank you for um coming on to the show and sharing your amazing very logical thinking stories and you know how you kind of live your life where you have a nice strategy to your life and I think every one of us should have a strategy around our life because without a strategy it's not going to work 
you know, you can't be random. You can't, you can't just do one thing here, one thing there. You know, in Bangla we say utal fatal, you yeah, know, yeah. ulta falta. Like ulta we, falta, you can't do this stuff. <laughs> you have to have a structured approach to everything that you do. There has to be some sort of organization. And also, thank you for coming on time because, mashallah, like, you know, I haven't seen <laughs> generally our people come before time, let alone coming on time. So thank you so much. And once again, we we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you in person very soon. Yes, yes, always, always. Bye. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. And that's it for today. It was an amazing conversation with Brother Bilal Shahid. Um, don't forget to follow him on his social media. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Side by Side channel so you don't miss another episode. At the time of this recording, we are only 600 subscribers away and by the time it's released hopefully in a few weeks time i know you will assist side by side podcast reach the first 2000 until then assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh